what's going on youtube welcome to a brand new video today i'm bringing you guys my top five tips that have helped me through my year of guns and boom and becoming a better player i hope these tips helps out some of the newer comers working their way up through the ranks as well as some of the veteran players in the community without further ado let's get started now starting up at number five guys we're going to talk about weapons now in guns and boom there's three tiers of weapons in my opinion. There's your lower tier, mid tier, and your top tier gold standard weapons. As far as weapons, you want to go based off your level. Obviously, if you're starting out, you can get away with using some of these lower tier and mid tier weapons. But as soon as you start hitting like level 34 and up, you're going to need to upgrade to these top tier weapons. And by top tier weapons, I'm talking about your Porcupine, Damascus, Odin, Firefly. You guys get the point. Now, if you guys are patient, you guys can save your gold from about from the daily quest. Or you guys, if you're not patient and you got the finances, you can buy the gold and get these weapons. Now, Guns of Boom has been coming out with these battle cases. And these battle cases sometimes have the top tier weapons. So my suggestion is, if you have the time and the weapon that you want comes out in these battle cases, make sure to grind for it. Because technically, you can get these weapons for free depending on which ones drop in the battle cases. Guns of Boom keeps coming out every now and then with different weapons coming out. And now it's a little easier to get these weapons with the 300 pieces that they drop on these epic cases. So make sure if you see the weapon you guys like, get on it. Now, number four guys, focusing on the objective. Now Guns of Boom has four different types of game modes. You got payload, you got TDM, we got King of the Hill and we have control points. Payload. Payload, as you can see, you have the offensive side and defensive side. As far as defense, it's the more preferable side. It's the easier side to play off of. You want to control that bridge side for sure. That bridge side is like that power position of the map. Holding that side and keeping the enemy at bay is key to winning and defensive. Now, let's say the enemy does push through. They get it almost to your spawn. It's okay, you pretty much just spawn right there anyway, so it's so easy and quick to get back to the defensive position on this map. That's why it's like the more preferable side. As far as offense, offense is quite a struggle on this map, especially with this sniper barracuda meta that's going on. It's a little harder because you kind of keep pushing that payload and once you get it to their side, it's such a long way to get there. And by the time you get there, the enemy's already probably set up we're in corners so my suggestion is work together as a team try to wipe them out as much as you can and push that payload little by little you got five minutes to win the game it's hard not but not impossible with a little bit of teamwork and luck you guys can get the dub now king of the hill king of the hill you got one point one objective you want to hold that point as long as you can also make sure you guys are getting those defensive kills now those defensive kills are where you rack up the points each defensive kill gives you another i believe 10 or 12 points extra on top of the 10 points you already get for the kill so if you're getting those defensive points and the defensive kills those points start racking up and it's very hard for the team to come back after that so make sure you guys are holding it down in your lanes holding down and getting map control and getting those defensive kills on point now control points guys, control points is similar to King of the Hill except you got three more points. The key to control points is at least holding two or more control points. If you can, go for that third one. If you can't, just don't worry about it. Hold down the two that you have, have that map control and keep getting those defensive kills guys. Defensive kills and the kill you get, those points rack up so much points. You get almost 20 plus points for each kill you get on the point or defensively. It's crazy guys, I'm telling you, these defensive kills help out so much in the long run. Now just make sure your team is holding it down, each one in the lanes, rolling in twos, threes is very popular strat that a lot of teams like to use. So you guys go ahead and experiment, rolling in twos or threes to each point, hold down the map control and I'm sure you'll get these dubs. Now TDM guys, TDM's a little different. You just wanna try to die as least as you can and also chain as much kills as you can. And by chaining kills, what I'm talking about is double kills, triple kills, and even quads. The points you get from those 
doubles, triples, and quads are enormous. Also, try to work on those killing sprees as it just gives you those extra boost of points. And once you build that lead, just keep trading kills and you'll eventually get the dub. One of the main things that helps me in TDM is getting headshots. Headshots give you, if you didn't know, gives you another two extra points on top of the 10 points that you get per kill. So I can't tell you enough times how many like games I've had where I've lost by two or four points. And I'm like, dang, if I just would have gotten those two or four extra points from those headshots, we could have won this game. So make sure you guys are getting those headshots. Make sure you guys are changing your kills. And work as a team. If you see your teammates weak and you're weak, maybe separate from them. Don't give up that double. Don't give up those triples or quads. Now, number three, guys, we're talking about power positions. Now, every map in Guns Boom has a point on it, which is very OP sometimes. You got these power positions where you can do so much damage to the other team, and it's very hard for them to take you down. For example, Mexico Village. Mexico Village has that wagon side. Now, if you go to that wagon side, you can hold it down with a sniper or an AR, and you can do so much damage to the other team just from that one side. Holding down that one power position on the map can help you win these games much more easier. Now, I'm not going to go through every power position because it's going to be too long of a video, but stay tuned because I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on each individual map, giving you guys some of my rush routes, some of the power positions I like to use. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Now, number two, guys, number two is teamwork. Teamwork goes a long way in Guns Boom, especially if you're trying to get into ESL or Guns Boom professionally. Now, as far as teamwork, what you want to focus on is filling in the gaps and by gaps i mean let's say your teammates are more passive and they're staying back a little bit more in order to fill that gap you want to be the rusher you want to push the point or push the team uh, enemy team whatever the gap is on your team slash clan whatever your group friends learning where to fill in those gaps is very beneficial to the overall team especially if you're trying to go for those dubs make sure you're doing your best to be a team player. Now, something I highly recommend, guys, is some kind of voice communications like Skype, Discord, or WhatsApp. So make sure you guys can get your buddies or your clanmates to download those apps so you guys can chat and be able to call out where the enemy's at, if they're weak. Little things like that is going to help you out so much in the long run. So voice chat is so beneficial. So if you're not on it, get on it. Now, number one, guys, last but not least, and this one was a little hard to accomplish, but that is learning from your mistakes. Now, I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning of the game. Things like buying the wrong guns, using the wrong equipment, doing things in game that cost us the game. But eventually, I started learning from those mistakes. I started to do them less often, and it really helped me grow as a player. Now, the key, I believe, is just making them as less often as you can. Because obviously nobody's perfect. We're all still going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. You know, it's, it's part of the game. Things happen. We can't control everything. So just trying to make those mistakes as less often as possible is going to help you be that much better than the person who doesn't learn from the mistakes. The person that just blames their teammates for their mistakes and, you know, the things that they did wrong so as long as you guys are learning from your mistakes trying to do your best and make them as less often as possible you guys are going to be good you guys are going to get that much better and yeah just keep learning guys keep learning and that's the number one tip i can give you guys with that said guys i want to thank you guys for watching this video if you made it this far thank you so much i appreciate it I just touched base on these points just a little bit, but I would go more into detail in future videos as far as what guns I use, the power positions that I use, the routes that I use, things like that, that can help you guys out. Stay tuned for those videos. Make sure you guys are subscribed, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Thank you guys again one more time. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.